My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. Today we're going to discuss something that sounds like an oxymoron. Should we use anarchy as an organizing principle of the European Union's institutions? Bear with me. The recent spate of fraud and corruption scandals in the European Union, in its institutions, signals the end of an era. Disillusionment and disenchantment with the rapacious Anglo-Saxon model of dog-eat-dog -dog capitalism may yet lead to a tectonic ideological shift from laissez-faire and self-regulation to state intervention and regulation. This would be the reversal of a trend dating back to Margaret Thatcher in Britain and Ronald Reagan in the United States. It would also cast some fundamental and way more ancient tenets of free marketry in grave doubt. Let's talk about markets. <clears throat> markets are perceived as self-organizing, self-assembling exchanges of information, goods and services. Adam Smith's invisible hand is the sum of all the mechanics and mechanisms whose interaction gives rise to the optimal allocation of economic resources. The market's great advantages over central planning are precisely its randomness and its lack of self-awareness. Market participants go about their egotistic, egoistic business, trying to maximize their utility, oblivious of the interests and actions of all, bar those they interact with directly. Somehow, out of the chaos and the clamor, a structure emerges of order and efficiency unmatched. Man is incapable of intentionally producing outcomes that are better than the markets. And so any intervention and interference are deemed to be detrimental to the proper functioning of the economy. They distort the price signal, as we call it. It is a minor step from this idealized worldview back to the physiocrats who preceded Adam Smith and who propounded the doctrine of laissez-faire, laissez-passer, the hands-off battle cry. Theirs was a natural religion. The market is an agglomeration of individuals they thundered, was surely entitled to enjoy the rights and freedoms accorded to each and every person. John Stuart Mill weighed against the state's involvement in the economy in his influential and exquisitely timed Principles of Political Economy, published, what else, in 1848. Undaunted, undaunted by mounting evidence of market failures, for instance, failures to provide affordable and plentiful public goods, this flawed theory returned with a vengeance in the last decades, two decades of the past century. Privatization, regulation, self-regulation, monetary economics became faddish buzzwords and part of a global consensus propagated by both commercial banks and multi multilateral lenders. As applied to the professions, to accountants, stockbrokers, lawyers, bankers, insurers, and so on, Self-regulation was premised on the belief in long-term self-preservation. Rational economic players and moral agents are supposed to maximize their utility in the long run by observing the rules and regulations of a level playing field. And this noble propensity seemed, alas, to have been tampered by avarice and narcissism and by the immature inability to postpone gratification. Self-regulation failed so spectacularly to conquer human nature that its demise gave rise to the most intrusive stale stratagems ever devised. In both the United Kingdom and the United States, the government is much more heavily and pervasively involved in the minutia of accountancy, stock dealing and banking than it was only 15 years ago. But the ethos and myth of order out of chaos 
with its, its proponents in the exact sciences as well. This myth ran, ran deep or deeper than that. The very culture of commerce was thoroughly permeated and transformed. It is not surprising that the internet, a chaotic network with an anarchic modus operandi, flourished exactly at these times. The dot-com revolution was less about technology than about new ways of doing business. Mixing umpteen irreconcilable ingredients, steering well and hoping for, hoping for the best. No one, for instance, offered a linear revenue model of how to translate eyeballs, monetized eyeballs, the number of visitors to a website, to money. Monetizing was just a slogan. It was dogmatically held to be true that miraculously traffic, a chaotic phenomenon at the best of times, will translate to profit. Hitherto the outcome of painstaking, structured, ordered, multi-annual labor. Privatization itself was such a leap of faith. State-owned assets, including utilities, suppliers of public goods such as health and education, state-owned assets were, transfer were transferred wholesale to the hands of profit maximizers, corporations, for example. The implicit belief was that the price mechanism would provide the missing planning and regulation. In other words, higher prices were supposed to guarantee an uninterrupted service. <laughs> Predictably, failure ensued, catastrophic failure, from electricity utilities in California to railway operators in Britain. The simultaneous crumbling of these urban legends, the liberating power of the net, the self-regulating markets, the unbridled merits of privatization, inevitably gave rise to a backlash. The state has acquired monstrous proportions in the decades since the Second World War, especially the last two decades. It is about to grow further and to digest a few sectors hitherto left untouched. To say the least, these are not good news. But we, libertarians, proponents of both individual freedom and individual responsibility, have brought it on ourselves by thwarting the work of that invisible regulator, the truly free market.